What's up guys? Today I want to talk to you about my trailer. You guys have been asking me to make a video about the trailer, so I want to tell you a little bit about it. So I got a PJ Trailers 40 foot gooseneck trailer with mega ramps and air raid and a lift axle. So the deck space where the wood is, is 35 feet long. And then the mega ramps part is an additional five. This particular tra trailer model sits 38 inches off of the ground to the top of the deck. Most of the standard trailers are 33 inches. This one is just a little bit higher. The gooseneck beam on this trailer is not a single piece, so it's got welds. Some of the newer models, they come with the single piece beam, so there are no welds. They say it's supposed to be better and stronger, but I don't see any issues with these welded ones. I mean got really good welds hopefully we won't have any problems with it so this trailer came originally with the ball mount for the goose neck and since I have a fifth wheel hookup I got the kingpin adapter got this uh, white loop plate this way when you're using this plastic loop plate you don't have to put grease on your fifth wheel still have your standard chains for safety you got your uh, emergency brake breakaway cable this particular trailer has um, electric over hydraulic disc brakes so we've got the pump for it right here it's a hydra star 1600 psi pump And it does a great job stopping this trailer. Get your uh, the spare tire mount right here. So we got the spare tire. And got the electric pump for the hydraulic brakes. The tires on this trailer are a little beefier. They are 14 ply versus standard 10 ply tires. So these are really nice. I've got uh, about 88,000 miles on this trailer and the tires still have plenty of life on it. I'll show you guys in just a second. So I've got uh, one toolbox on the driver's side. keep my blankets for the tarps here jack for the trailer just in case if there's a flat tire more blankets my bungees a couple of big corner protectors smaller corner protectors you know just whatever you need you can put in here we've got the sliding track on the driver's side with the Strap winches. I think they're called winches. They may be called something different. There's 10 of them here on the track. Actually, eight on the track, and two of them are welded. The track ends right before you get to the first tire. Then you got this one in between the two wheels, and this one is welded on. You've got another little track right here. 
And then you've got the last one on the tail end also welded. So the tires still have about, uh, I'd say about half life on them. For sure. Okay, so these are 16 inch wheels. The tires are 235-80-16. And they call for 110 PSI max whenever it's cold. You don't ever want to put max in it. Um, I put about 95 to 100 PSI in them. Because whenever you start putting max, which I've done on a previous trailer, not knowing exactly how to properly inflate uh, trailer tires, whenever you put max PSI that's allowed on a tire and you drive with weight on it in the hot weather, they start heating up and then they just blow up on you. So I've learned that the hard way. So now I just, uh, I put about 80% of uh, max allowed air pressure in it so about 95 to 100 psi has been good for me this trailer has the 12,000 pound dexter axles two 12,000 pound dexter axles here are the airbags for the air suspension Get your, uh, I don't know if this is called the twist tube or the torque tube. But yeah, you got that in the middle of the trailer. This trailer has the Bulldog adjustable, two speed adjustable stands. And they are. It says lift 10,000 pounds and static 12,000 pounds, whatever that means. So each one, yeah, this handle, this handle is a two speed adjustable. I'm not sure why anybody would use a slow speed to lift up the trailer. So I've got this wood rack right here, but I use it to keep my tarps. So normally trailers come with the, the cross members that go from left to right side of the trailer usually they are 14 inches apart this particular trailer has them 11 inches apart which makes it a little bit stronger and so you get your uh, torque tube running all the way from the front of the trailer all the way to the back or twist tube torque tube whatever it keeps the trailer from twisting from left to right Get your shocks for the axles, airbags, get your disc brakes. Disc brakes are definitely nicer than electric drum brakes. That is for sure. Got the compartment here for the air ride. Got your compressor, battery, the little panel that gives you the battery level readout. 
There's your gauge that shows you the PSI that the airbags are pumped up to. So you got this knob right here. You can dump the whole suspension so the whole trailer will go down. Or this one right here. This is for your lift axle function. So I currently have the front axle lifted. So I will dump it now. pretty nice to have a lift axle function that way you're not wasting your tires when you're driving empty and you know less fuel wasting this one here if you push this knob it's supposed to dump the whole suspension down I think mine's a little bit faulty because when I push it in I hear the air being exhausted from the airbags but the trailer goes down super slow so I think something might not be right with mine or I guess when you pull, it's supposed to exhaust the airbags. So I hear the air hissing coming out, but like the trailer is moving down very slowly. And I mean, this may be normal, I'm not sure, but I never used this function anyway, so it really makes me no difference. I mean, it's going down fairly quick, but not not as fast as like when you're lifting the axle up but I'm assuming that's normal that's probably how it's supposed to be so there's the air suspension part of it the trailer has LED lighting all around it These LED lights halfway down the trailer on a the side, these work as uh, emergency lights and your whenever you step on the brakes, they light up as well. Have more lights on the side here in the back corner. Tail lights are also LED. Got a front mounted toolbox. I keep all my equipment in here, my straps, my corner protectors, all my ratchets, more straps, different size straps, my chains, my binders, everything stays in here. Pretty, very deep toolbox, by the way. It fits a lot. Both sides have steps that you can use to get on top of the trailer. We have a little plate that you can mount a winch to, like if you need to pull a car onto the trailer that doesn't start. I don't think I'll ever use this at all. So the wood on the deck you know with the weather it ages and uh, whenever you're in hot climates it's going to eventually warp in certain areas so that's uh, one thing i don't like about the way they did on this trailer is they used flimsy screws very weak and uh, they just secure the wood at the end of where the wood ends like here they could have secured it right here as well you know there's cross members 11 inches apart they could have secured it more and you know more places but this wood it started to warp and it just pretty much breaks these bolts i get it the bolts are still in the wood but they're broken it just pops them out of the cross members so that's one thing i wish they would have done a little bit better
the powder coating is not bad you know eventually with with age it starts peeling on most trailers one thing guys um, which I never really paid attention to whenever I'm uh, using chains and binders is uh, never hook your binders next to the stake pockets always hook your binders next to these round ones I forgot what these are called always you know always forget certain things but yeah never never connect them next to the stake pockets because whenever you start tightening the binders down it'll bend it and uh, I never really paid attention to that but now now I'm paying more attention to where I'm putting my binders yeah always want to put them next to the round round pieces so the GVWR on this trailer is 25,000 pounds 900 so 25,900 pounds the trailer itself weighs 10,100 pounds so if I don't have any tools on it like all my ratchets chains straps tarps if you don't count all of that then you can put 15,800 pounds of weight onto the trailer but considering the weight of all the tarps the chains the ratchets binders straps I try not to go over 15,000 pounds of weight on the trailer I don't even like to go up that high that's a lot of stress on the trailer the truck the lower the lower the weight the better So the monster rams, the ones that I've got, they come with this bar that locks them in place. Some of the models they have, uh, they have like little latches that sit on the side, and you just pop it up, and it unlatches, pop it down, and it latches. I don't know which ones are better. I think the the latches are a little bit more convenient. But yeah, I just take these pins out. And the monster ramps are spring loaded so they don't drop on the ground. You can lock them in this position as well. If you need to drive with them this way for any weird reason, you can lock them in this position as well. My trailer is a little too high to have um, like sedans pull up on top of it, but I can easily put trucks on it with no problem. So yeah, that's the monster ramps. They're about open. They are about ten feet in length. I think monster ramps are better than having pull-out ramps because they are a lot wider of course it's not as convenient as the drop down tail hydraulic controlled do uh, I forgot if it is called dovetail or the ones that's hydraulic controlled you just hit the button and it lowers those are nice but that adds quite a bit of uh, price to your trailer uh, this trailer, this particular mo model was uh, $35,000. You know, having the electric over hydraulic disc brakes, the air suspension with the lift axle, that all adds up to the price. And having the extra cross members to strength strengthen the skeleton of the trailer, that also adds up to the pricing. Overall, I'm happy with this trailer. It does a good job. Haven't had any issues. Love the tires. The 14 ply tires are awesome. If you guys ever buy a trailer, try not to get the 10 ply 
tires because those are those are crap you want to go with 14 ply they're going to last you a lot longer and these axles are oil bath axles so not grease but oil and interesting the lug nuts you probably can't see it but the lug nuts actually tell you 175 foot pounds of torque that's what you're supposed to torque them to never seen that on a lug nut I've got my TPMS sensors on all the wheels and here's the handle if you want to dump the air from the air tank you want to do that every now and then just to get all the moisture out toolbox for the not the toolbox but the box that holds the air suspension components I guess uh, the coating is peeling so it's starting to get rusty but that's because it's open on a road and everything that's on a road just kind of hits it nothing a little pain can't fix hey guys I'm trying to close this ramp I just wanted to show you how the spring works and the spring is holding it from falling down so it's not going to fall down on you i put a strap across my monster rams because they kind of rattle whenever you go over road imperfections so the strap just kind of holds it down from rattling that's pretty much it on the trailer I mean I don't know what much more I can tell you guys about this trailer it gets the job done uh, the only issue I had I did actually have an issue the electric pump went out my brakes weren't working so this thing right here hydrostar pump they put a new one on That was the only issue I had with this trailer. Other than that, it's been good for me. So, that's pretty much it, guys. I think I told you pretty much uh, everything I can tell you about this trailer. If you guys have any questions, just comment down below. I'd be more than happy to answer them. I'll see you guys in the next video.